Hi everybody, hope you've all had a great holiday season. We're still taking a break and we'll be back in February. But since the new year, there have been some great stories that we felt we just had to share with you. For example, Penny, why did scientists put 3D glasses on cuttlefish and put them in a tiny underwater movie theater? Yeah, I saw this and my first thought was, well, obviously they want an Ig Nobel Prize. Correct but... answer, absolutely. <laughs> like, like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> Story over. No, they're investigating 3D vision. So there's this um, phenomenon known as, or a process known as stereopsis, which is that our eyes see things, each eye, our left eye and our right eye, sees things a bit differently. And we can put that together with the movements of our head and so on to get a picture of where things are in three-dimensional space. So this is really easily demonstrated. If you hold a finger up, you know, a few centimetres in front of your nose and then um, like wink your left eye and then your right eye, it will look like your finger's moving back and forth. Don't do this if you're sees, driving. Don't do this if you're driving. But it looks like your left eye sees a different version to your right eye. But usually, unless something's like really in our face, we don't see two different visions of our finger or whatever our brain merges them together and we perceive whatever object we're looking at in three-dimensional space. Now, there's other depth cues we use. So if you have ever worn an eye patch for whatever reason, you know you don't completely you lose your 3D vision, but you might have found you maybe weren't as good at judging distance and so on because we can also see how things move relative to each other how hard our eyes need to focus to look at certain things and so on. So I've been talking about humans a lot. Back to cuttlefish. Now, it was only conclusively proved in the 19th century or shown scientifically that humans did this phenomenon called stereopsis. And this latest um, research has shown that cuttlefish do it too. It seems to have evolved separately multiple times in different lineages. So it's not just like a one-off thing that evolved once and has been inherited. It's something that has, you know, it's come differently. But what is really interesting I enjoyed about this was looking at how they did the research. So cuttlefish um, are like squid and they have tentacles and eyes, two eyes obviously, and they put little 3D glasses on the cuttlefish. So the idea basically was they put... 3D glasses on the cuttlefish. They played them some, and you know, like the old school ones, like um, yeah, red the blue in and one red eye, ones, yeah. blue in the other. <laughs> like you know, from not not the classy ones you might have seen Avatar with, but the really old school. The eighties ones. ones, yeah. The eighties, and um, and then they showed them some 3D movies of shrimp, which is a cuttlefish's preferred prey. And what they were judging is because cuttlefish do pretty good targeted um, attacks in in 3d depth so they're saying well you know are they how are they doing in terms of the perception of where the shrimp should be based on the distance apart in the movie um are they seeing it in 3d and are they able to target their attack accordingly so even though the the shrimp actually wasn't there you know it was just a movie of a shrimp if the images were closer together the shrimp seems i think further away if the images of the red and the blue are further apart, it would seem closer to the cuttlefish. And what they showed was, yeah, they do seem to have stereopsis, which in some ways is not surprising. They're quite smart animals. Uh, they're predators. And predators really often have this facility. So something I used to do with my VCE students when we looked at this phenomenon is you compare predatory birds like an owl to a bird that is more typically prey. Or you compare a predatory animal like a dog to an animal that is more typically prey like a cow. And what you'll notice is that cows have, owl, uh, have eyes on the sides of their head. Mm -hmm. They have almost 360 degree vision of the world. They can see around them if something's coming to eat them. Ah. But how much 3D vision do you really need to bend your head down and eat some grass? <laughs> Not much, yeah. but a predator is going to do a really quick strike to get its prey, so like the cuttlefish does. So for a predator, 3D vision is really important 
because you get one chance before your whatever starts running off, your prey starts to get, to get away from you. So it's not surprising that a predator like cuttlefish has it. It's of course not just for predators. Like this is no, I'm not going to go evolutionary psychology and say, well, humans have 3D vision, therefore we're meat eaters because other situations where it might be useful, swinging through Climbing a tree. Climbing trees, yeah. Climb, you know, like anything where you have to judge or we're judging death provides an evolutionary advantage. So I really liked reading about this. Some of the difficulties they had were actually getting the cuttlefish to wear the glasses. The cuttlefish did not like wearing they the have glasses. Ears? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so they had at first they were gluing them directly onto their skin. Wow. But the they, the cuttlefish would try and rip them off. So then they ended up gluing Velcro to the skin and attaching the glasses to the Velcro. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it's just really – it's interesting research. I, I don't know how you see through the humour of it to say, well, you know, it mm. actually is important to show that we are um, – you know, that this – ability has evolved multiple times like it's very easy and i got very caught up in the whole cuttlefish and 3d glasses ridiculousness <laughs> of it all at the yeah. base of things that's but, the yeah. hook that they're using to get you to pay mm. attention obviously but I, I was wondering about the whole playing a movie thing why not just put some shrimp in the tank for them to catch but i guess it's so that they can control how far away the shrimp appears to the yeah, cuttlefish the shrimp isn't it? is and yeah. i'm guessing also like i was saying at the start i I'm guessing that it's possible that cuttlefish would use other depth cues. So, for example, just say there's a shrimp and I've only got sort of a flat field of vision, like I'm not using stereopsis, but I can, as I move, it moves against a background and the degree that it moves against the background can give me a hint of how close it is to me. Again, if you put yep. your, shut one eye and put your hand in front of you and move your head, you can see it seems to move relative to the background a different amount so maybe they were trying to make sure that the only depth cue that was being used was the one that was under their control yeah which was that yeah, yeah. reducing variables fair enough mm. well yeah i think that was definitely one that couldn't wait until february we had to share no, that oh <laughs> no we had to share like it started coming up in you know everything i was reading i'm like oh this is fun yeah yeah well, thanks for that, Penny. And thank you, everyone, for downloading this. We will be back in February. Uh, so stay tuned then.